Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sue, and today's April 19th, and I'm bringing you a reading update. Um, now you're wondering why I've got the fireplace going back here, and I got my cup of coffee. Uh, yeah, it was pretty chilly this morning. According to the Chicago Tribune, spring's been put on hold. I woke up to snow covered grass this morning. Cannot believe it's April and we're still getting snow. It's totally insane. Um, but anyway, I wanted to update you on what I've read so far and what I'm currently reading. Um, I just finished an audiobook called Death by Chocolate Cherry Cheesecake by Sarah Graves. This is the first in a new series. It just came out in January of this year. Uh, it features a character by the name of Jacobia. She goes by the name of Jake and uh, she is running a chocolate shop along with a friend of hers named Ellie who helps with the baking and everything. And uh, it's a typical cozy mystery set in a small little town, kind of at the seaside, um, like an island area. And um, yeah, it's they're they're in, involved in some kind of big fundraiser thing. They've gotten in a big uh, contract to make all these chocolate cherry cheesecakes. And uh, Jake goes in to work one morning and finds a chocolate covered dead guy in the kitchen. And thus ensues the uh, mystery that, uh, of course, you know, they tend to try to solve themselves. Um, the, the mystery kind of got really crazy. I mean, they found themselves in some pretty hair-raising situations, which I thought, you know, by now a sane person would have called the police. So it, it went a little beyond um, a typical cozy mystery. I mean, the situations got really, uh, I felt, um, really exaggerated, I guess, that's for something that you would think could take place in this small little location and, and uh, that they would stay involved in without bringing in police support. Um, and, and the one thing I didn't like about it, I, the characters are fairly interesting, but I never felt really connected to them or, or got to know them very well, particularly our main character, Jake. Uh, and what I come to learn is that she is actually, I think both of them are actually characters from Ms. Graves' uh, previous kind of home repair mystery uh, series. So these characters were already well established, and for a reader coming into this series, I just felt like um, like a fish out of water, so to speak. Uh, like I, there too much had too much history between them and, and their past and family life and everything, uh, particularly Jake and her husband and, and, and son. And I just felt like um, you know I was coming in late to the party. So um, how many more cliches can I throw into this video? <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I don't think I will revisit the previous series. I'm not really interested in home repair or anything like that. Um, but overall, this was just kind of an okay mystery series. I don't know that I will necessarily continue with it. Um, kind of probably just leave it at that one. Uh, the other book I finished was this massive uh, graphic novel. <laughs> this is The Walking Dead Compendium 3, which uh, collects issues 97 through 144. I started this probably almost over a year ago, and I've just been slowly reading little bits of it at a time. I didn't want to get too far into it, um, since I am also watching the television series. And even though the two kind of depart from each other, um, plot-wise and sometimes with characters as to who's still living or who's not, or who exists in one world and doesn't exist in another, uh, there are still some central characters like Negan here. He's kind of like the quintessential bad guy uh, that we're currently dealing with. So I didn't want to get too far ahead in this, uh, but I'm, where I'm at now is just a little beyond, I think, the point on the TV show. And since we just hit the uh, season finale, I decided to go ahead and polish this one off. And there's a hell of a cliffhanger at the end of this. Um, the artwork is fantastic. I mean, sometimes you get these, you know, double page spreads, um, really detailed um, look. And it's just lots of action. And if you're into the series at all, I mean, I definitely recommend it, and even if you're just looking for a really good graphic novel, these are, are worth picking up. They're probably more cost savings if you pick up these huge compendiums than the individual volumes or the individual graphic novels, uh, but really, really enjoyed that. Uh, next up, I finished uh, another book, The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. This is a book I've wanted to read for some time. I also wanted to see the movie because I really like Jim Broadbent, and uh, I don't know the actress's name here. But I've seen her in Broadchurch recently uh, as a, a barrister. Really, really great actress. Uh, I really enjoy her work too. And I've seen her in a few other things I can't quite remember. Um, but I haven't had a chance to see the movie, so I can't really make any kind of comparisons to it. Uh, but the book was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a slim little volume here. Um, it's about a character named Tony Webster. Uh, this character here, he's retired, kind of in his mid-60s, divorced, uh, a father. I think almost grandfather as the story's continuing. And it's a look back on his life, um, kind of as he remembers it and as, as he's starting to remember more, you might say, as uh, things in his, his current time is kind of triggering memories that he kind of maybe suppressed in a way 
of his past and some things that he did um, that he now comes to regret. But it is definitely a book about memory. Uh, it's beautifully told. There's some really lovely passages in here I just kind of want to share with you too. Uh, especially right, right off the beginning here. It says, We live in time. It holds us and molds us, but I've never felt I understood it very well. And I'm not referring to the theories about how it bends and doubles back or may exist elsewhere in parallel versions. No, I mean ordinary everyday time, which clocks and watches assure us passes regularly. Tick tock, click clock. Is there anything more plausible than a second hand? And yet it takes only the smallest pleasure or pain to teach us time's malleability. Some emotions speed it up, others slow it down. Occasionally it seems to go missing, until the eventual point when it really does go missing, never to return. Uh, so I found myself captivated and, and kind of marking off passages throughout this book, um, and I just thought it was really beautiful. Um, the ending, uh, I will admit that it confused me a little bit. It's a little ambiguous. I think it's meant to be that way. And I kind of read back and, and saw some of the clues and things as how it kind of reveals what that ending means. And uh, I thought it was just amazing, amazing story. And I definitely want to see this movie, so I highly recommend this one. Uh, what am I currently reading? First, we'll start with the audiobook. The audiobook I'm currently listening to is The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. You can quite see that. Uh, my library happened to have this, so I downloaded it, and I uh, just started it uh, yesterday, I think it was, and I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, it's a story of um, a young woman by the name of Nina. She has recently lost her job as a librarian and uh, finds herself kind of at a loss as to what to do. She's always been surrounded by books. Her job has been, like, as a matchmaker, as it describes in the synopsis, a uh, matchmaker of people with the, just the right book. And now that she has kind of been made redundant, uh, doesn't know what to do. And as I'm listening to this book and I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> it's kind of parallel life here, you know? I, I, you know, similar situation for me. If you're new to my channel, I'd worked for a bookshop for 33 years when suddenly I was laid off, my job was taken away. So I, I felt a lot of parallels and, and sympathy for this character is what she was going through. and. Uh, struggling to find out what the next step is, where to go, and in this particular instance she um, decides to uh, purchase this huge van and make it a bookmobile, only to come to learn that due to, uh, I guess, traffic or height restrictions and things because of the size of this vehicle, she can't even actually park it anywhere near where she lives, and it kind of sets in motion a chain of events where she she ended up going to Scotland to find this particular van, now she ends up going back to Scotland this remote little kind of farming type community uh, where she's going to end up you know running this bookmobile service and I'm really enjoying it so far I like the characters I like her character a little bit kind of unsure of herself she's uh, not the best fire froze uh, she's not the best see it's so cold my fire froze um, <laughs> she's not the best driver of the vehicle um, as, you, as you come to see it especially in the beginning uh, but I like the interaction with the various characters, uh, particularly her ex-roommate who comes to kind of help move some of the uh, boxes. It turns out to be 70 boxes of books uh, from their, their flat to um, where she's living now out in Scotland. And uh, <laughs> her reaction when she gets fresh farm eggs. She says, you're telling me this egg came out of that chicken's butt? <laughs> and I just I burst out laughing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, really enjoyable. I highly recommend it so far. Like I said, I even just started and, I, and I'm loving it. The other book I'm still reading is The Company of the Dead by David J. Kowalski. Um, I haven't made much progress in this because of the next book I'll be showing you. Uh, I've been focused on that one a lot. This is a book I kind of started, I think, early February or so. And then um, when I kind of hit that, we'll call it a reading slump due to unforeseen circumstances, I stopped reading for quite a bit during uh, the end of February into March. Uh, so I set this monster tome down for quite a bit, and now I'm, I'm having a little trouble getting back into it, um, also because of um, uh, reading uh, read-alongs that I've, I've joined in that kind of keep pushing this one back. So I'm hoping I don't get back to it too late where I start forgetting too much of the plot. But this is a uh, kind of time travel, historical fiction focused around the Titanic. There's also like Roswell and uh, a weird twist to what used to be known as the United States of America um, and German and Japanese occupation of the former United States. It's, it's really, really bizarre, but the little political aspects that kind of get into it um, have, I found kind of a little bit boring, a little bit confusing at times as to who's on what side. and um, So that's making it a little bit difficult to kind of get back into the main plot line. But uh, it started out really, really intriguing too with someone trying to 
prevent the Titanic from sinking and um, things don't quite go to plan. And maybe that triggered this whole chain of events that makes it a different type of um, outcome than our current situation where the Titanic did sink and it didn't set off some kind of, uh, like, like I said, a chain reaction of some sort. But um, I'm only on page uh, 273 <laughs> and this thing has uh, almost 745 pages or so. So I'm hoping to get back into this um, perhaps when I finish the uh, book that I'm about to show you. And the other you. book I'm continuing to read is uh, Anthony Trollope's Can You Forgive Her? Uh, this is the Axford World Classics Edition. I also have it as an ebook and an audiobook, but now I've just kind of been, especially since, like when I'm at work at lunch, I can kind of take this thing along. I don't want to lug my iPad around with me, but I've been marking off passages and uh, yeah, this is part of the read along over at Steve Donahue's channel. Uh, when I started out this book, I was a little concerned as to whether I was going to um, keep going with it. it was just the, the, the first chapter, um, which I'll go on more about when I kind of do an overall review of it. Um, I thought the text was like, oh geez, am I going to be able to read through this prose? It seemed really kind of your typical kind of classic, a little bit more difficult, archaic type. Just for this first thing. But then after that, I just found myself getting more and more and more into it to the point where I really don't want to put it down. I want to keep reading it. Um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Uh, so I'm actually further along than I, than I should be right now, but I can't stop reading it. Uh, I should be within like this section through here, but I'm already in the final. So we're splitting up into like four weeks, uh, 20 chapters um, a week. And uh, yeah, uh, this is the first of the Palliser novels um, about a young woman named Alice Vavasor. She's sort of torn between um, you know, two lovers. She's, she keeps waffling back and forth in terms of who she's engaged to, and you see this kind of mirrored in uh, several other characters in, in similar situations to them. And um, yeah, it's, 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 like I said, I'm really enjoying it, but I'll, I'll talk more about it at a later time. But anyway, that's my reading wrap up. That's what I'm kind of currently reading. and. What I've read so far in the past, I guess, week or so since I've done a reading update. But uh, anyway, let me know what you guys are reading, if anything good. Uh, have you read any of these books? Have you read and maybe seen the movie? What did you think about the movie? Is it worth trying to track a copy down? Uh, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you later.